Hello, this is Wiley from Learn to Barbecue. This video is part installation and also a full product review. The product is Thermoworks Billows and it is an add-on product for the Signals thermometer product. The installation part is going to be installing the billows onto a Weber Kettle Premium 22. As you can see, a hole has to be drilled, but before you panic, it's a lot easier than you think. The first thing we need to do is find out where we need to drill the hole. Start by getting behind the grill so the front is facing away from you. From this viewpoint, you will be making the hole on the right side of the grill. Now there are a few steps we need to do so we can make sure the hole is in the correct place. Also, you're going to need a few tools and some materials. First material is masking tape. Don't use the blue or green tape, for it is not strong enough. Also, get the wide version. Now you need to start taping approximately where the hole should be. Put down long strips of tape and move the ash vents around so you can get underneath them. Now rotate the ash vents fully clockwise until they stop. Now trace around the vent using a dark pen or pencil. Make sure the lines are very visible on the tape. Now rotate the ash vent counterclockwise until it stops. Now trace around the new vent over the tape. Now go get the truck hole grate and put it in place. Then trace where the tape is. Now remove the grate. Draw a parallel line about a half an inch below your traced line. To find the spot to drill, you need to find these three points. Look at these three points and then find the middle of the triangle. The spot that you have found is clear of the ash vents and also the charcoal grate. Now drill a pilot hole. The porcelain enamel on the bowl is really hard to drill, so use a new bit and take your time. Pretty mean looking bit, but it also gets the job done. When using this bit, you will fill the pops as it makes the hole larger. In my case, when I felt seven pops, I knew I was done. Oh, I forgot to tell you, it makes a sound similar to fingernails on a chalkboard, except it's about 10 times louder. Besides the noise, it does make a perfect hole, for as it cuts, it also deburs the metal. Also, it is quite a workout. After a while, that drill motor feels like it weighs about 50 pounds. But then you are done, and the hole is exactly one inch wide 
and perfectly round. Next you peel off the tape and knock off all the metal debris. The tape should come off real easy, but again take your time for a lot of the metal fragments will stick to the tape and not you. Knock off any metal fragments and I recommend you vacuum out the bottom of the bowl. Now put the charcoal grate back in and rotate the ash vents all the way to the left and then to the right just to make sure everything is clear. Just one more thing to do to finish this modification, and that is to paint the inside of the hole. I did do one final pass with the hole bit just to make sure all the metal burrs were gone, so I went from the outside in. Wipe the area clean and then put a piece of masking tape over the hole from the outside. Now using a high temperature paint like Rust-Oleum will protect the metal from rusting. Let the paint completely dry. This usually takes at least a few hours. Peel off the tape and the modification is now complete. Here are a few different views of the hole and how it looks to the outside. Looks pretty good to me. Now we can add the billows to the grill. There are two springs you need to insert. It is best to secure one in the hole and then follow up by inserting the second spring in the hole. The billows will be held in place by the springs and a soft air sealed gasket will keep the grill airtight. Now we need to add the other parts. Here's the Signal's 4 channel barbecue alarm thermometer. This is the controller of the billows fan. Next you need the splitter cable that supplies power to the signals unit 
and also control to the fan. Now plug in the power line that plugs into an AC power outlet. And now plug in the bellows control cord. Here's channel 4 on the signals unit without the bellows plugged in. Here is what channel 4 looks like when the bellows is plugged in. Notice there is now a fan icon and the default temperature is 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Here is the performance test that we'll be running. The test bed will be a Weber Kettle 22 inch set up for indirect cooking. The test is to see how quickly the billows can reach temperature and then maintain temperature. The temperatures in this order are 225 degrees Fahrenheit, 250 degrees Fahrenheit, 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and then 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Here is the grill being set up for test. First the air probe is attached to the charcoal grate in the middle of the grill. A Weber charcoal basket is put on one side and another Weber basket is put on the other side. A full chimney of Kingsford original charcoal briquettes that have now burned for 15 minutes. The briquettes are then evenly distributed between the two charcoal baskets. Just a last look to make sure the baskets have equal amounts of coals. Now put on the cover. The plan is the cover stays on for the whole test, unless there's an issue. Here's the signal's thermometer, and you can see how quickly the grill air temperature is rising. Here is the complete temperature chart for our tests. On this first test of 225 degrees, the grill overshot and did not stabilize till it hit 247 degrees. I believe the overshoot was caused by me for not letting the grill stabilize for 10 to 15 minutes before turning on the billows. I then turned up the signal's thermometer to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Within 8 minutes, the billows had brought the grill temperature up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit and there was no overshoot. After 30 minutes, I then set the signals to 300 degrees. Within 15 minutes, billows had brought the grill temperature up to 300 degrees and there was no overshoot. It also less than 2 degree fluctuation. We then had another operator error in that we burned up all our charcoal. I then added a handful of briquettes to each basket and the grill fully recovered to 300 degrees in 10 minutes. In the final 30 minutes of testing, we cranked the signals up to 350 degrees and it took 15 minutes to reach temperature. Never overshot and at that point, never less than 3 degrees fluctuation. Thermoworks is not the first to market with a temperature control fan but they are definitely the best in market with one based on the Superior Signals barbecue thermometer. We give this product a top five star rating and have now added it to our own outdoor kitchen as a product we will use in all future reviews. Bon Appetit! If you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Also, we really appreciate you watching.